vibration and what ends up happening is they end up attracting entities that are doing exactly that that they're resonating on the level of fear despair fright frustration anger and that's that's not where you want to be those aren't who you want to be talking to and let me tell you the ones that resonate there they aren't who you want to be talking to and some of our worst cases i'd say 90 percent of our worst cases come from people that have been looking for exactly that they've just forgotten that their loved ones are now in a really, really happy place. And we can't really get there yet. And it's okay if you can't get there yet. But if you can't, you gotta sit back and wait a little bit. So how do we go about doing investigations? Well, one of the first things that we like to do is we wanna figure out exactly what's going on in haunting the house. So one of, we, we, one of the things we look for is something called residual energy. Now residual energy isn't actually a haunting. What it is, is actually, energy recorded into the environment and a lot of scientists are pretty sure the root cause of it is electromagnetic fields which is also by the way what your thoughts are made up of um, if you get hooked up to uh, any medical instrument or anything like that and you um, your, your all your thoughts actually have a frequency and they resonate in electromagnetic fields um, but basically in the environment when these levels are very very high it seems to actually play back sounds images um, smells that have occurred in the environment in the past. Now, what's hard about this is that sometimes it looks very, very, very similar to a human spirit haunting. You've got footsteps, you might see apparitions, um, you might smell things that don't belong in the house, you might hear noises, uh, like a door slam. But the thing is, and the difference is, is that you can go into one of these haunted places and find residual energy and Say, for example, you'll hear a door shut, but there's no door there. Or you'll hear keys drop, but there's no keys there. So what's happening is that instead of an, a spirit which interacts with the physical environment, you're, you're seeing where, where you'd normally see keys or something like that drop on the floor. Now all of a sudden you're not seeing those. You're actually just seeing the, or hearing the memory of what's going on. So when we're talking about human spirits, we're talking about spirits that actually interact in their environment. We're talking about ones that can are creating footsteps. They do want to talk to you. They do want to interact with you on some level. So it's really, a, 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 a phenomenal experience. There is a darker side to paranormal research. Absolutely. A lot of people think, oh yeah, you know those movies like Amityville Horror and all those things, you know, they, those things can't be real. Well, there is a side to this where you can actually manifest into your experience an entity that does think, feel, do all of these things, um, but it resonates not at such a good level. And what we've done is we created a workshop around that called the Demon Strategy, Shedding Light on the Dark Side of Ghost Hunting, which teaches people to recognize what they're giving off that's actually attracting things into their environment that they may not want. And let me tell you, some of the entities that we've run into over the years, and I've lived with a couple of them myself, can be extremely, extremely destructive. And you want to get to a point where you're not even in vibration, the vibrational vicinity of that. So that's kind of what the Dina strategy is about. Show you our DVD here that we've actually got available. It's four hour workshop, and it's 30 bucks at our booth, so it's pretty good. Equipment now is something else. When we go into any sort of investigation, we, there's no such thing as anything like a ghost meter or anything like that. What it is, is that you have enough equipment to monitor the environment and rule out what things could possibly be. So for example, you're looking for high levels of static electricity or you know, things that could be causing something like lights coming into a window that you know, may be causing a reflection or anything like that. One of the things that we use is, is a basic digital recorder. Um, this was actually started, it's called Electronic Voice Phenomenon, and it was actually started by Thomas Edison way, way back when, and it's continued in the world of ghost hunting ever since, because basically you can record voices on these that don't belong, and they actually come at a, either a higher or lower frequency than what was actually, the human voice is actually capable of recording. So it's not a radio coming through or anything like that, this is something else. And there's a societies dedicated to this all over the world. We're actually offering right now at our booth um, a 
limited CD for five bucks, which has got some of our EVPs that we've recorded over the years, as well as some of our investigation footage, um, and a preview, a 10 minute preview of our demon strategy workshop. So that might be something you guys are interested in. I was talking before about electromagnetic fields. This is something that we use these things for. Um, so basically we're looking, as I say, for high levels of this, because what ends up happening is that you end up running into uh, a phenomenon that might be residual energy where you don't really need to deal with any sort of interaction with spirits. It's literally something that's being recorded into the environment. Um, how many people have ever taken orb photography? Anybody ever tried? Okay, let me explain a little bit about what this is because this is a really common thing that people get in their photographs quite a bit. Um, what you might have noticed is that sometimes you'll be taking photos, especially with a digital camera, in any sort of uh, uh, dusty, sometimes dusty area, sometimes outdoors, but you'll get what looks like almost spherical type um, uh, blobs, like gray blobs in the photographs. And some of them look like they have things inside them, some of them look like they're glowing, um, and it happens quite frequently. So there are two sides to this phenomenon. Um, the one side is the idea that, well, you know, it's, it's energy. I mean, we all know that all energy, the easiest form that it creates is a sphere. We all know that, um, you know, these things happen. I mean, we've seen them with our naked eye. These bright, bright, bright glowing balls just shooting across in the middle of space. Uh, but at the same time, it becomes a little tricky because the digital cameras, the way they're built now, is that they're trying to focus in on very, very small particles. And what can happen is that you'll take a picture, that little laser will shoot out um, hit something very, very tiny and create a distortion which actually causes an orb effect. So it can be really, really hard to tell the difference and there really is no litmus test for these photographs. So what we always tell people is that the only way to really tell is to get the temperature. <laughs> so how do you take an orb's temperature? A little tricky. Now the best way to do it is a laser thermometer. So as I say, it's, it's a little hard in, in that regard to try to nail it down. So. But anyway, there are tons and tons of haunted places around Edmonton. How many of you guys have probably been to Hotel McDonald? Tons of amazing activity in there. We were recently there and uh, we had an amazing experience. We're walking down the hallway and taking photographs and the fellow that we work with, who is quite intuitive, um, he picked up on a, a spirit by the name of Mike and described him very clearly. And as soon as he did that, our EMF meter started going off the charts. So, uh, okay, this is really interesting. We've got now one person that's confirming it, and now we've got an instrument that's confirming it. So, as our one investigator, Laura, began to take pictures, we actually caught a bright orb. Now, in this hotel, there was no dust anywhere. It was just spotless. I mean, these people take good care of this place. And we're going down the hall, and actually following this orb down the hall as we're going. It was really, a, it was really, really amazing. So, we've had some just really cool experiences. And let me tell you, it is one of the most rewarding things that you can possibly get into if you can do the work first. At our workshop tomorrow, which is called Ghost Experience, the journey of life, discovering life after life, um, we're gonna be talking about exactly this and talking about some of our, our cases as well as the electronic voice phenomenon that we've been talking about here. We've 